Hi there, Leslie here. Welcome to East Tennessee again. You know how much I want to make some tarps. I want to make, I showed you all the wonderful fabric I got for a dollar yard at Walmart. Six foot wide fabric. And, uh, <clears throat> and I've gone out on YouTube and gotten a lot of tips and pointers. And I think I can make a 60 or $70 tarp for about, for about $20. Now, <clears throat> problem is all of that fabric has to be hemmed. Never called myself a seamstress. I've <clears throat> stitched a lot of bridles. I've done that since I was in high school. My mother always said, why can't you sew? You spend all these hours hand stitching things. Why can't you sew? I said, well, it's because fabric won't stay put. Leather will. So anyway, <clears throat> but as we go along and we take on new projects, we have to learn new skills and master new tools. For some of you, this won't be a problem. For me, whoa, talk about a learning curve. So I have Mary Margaret's sewing machine here, which she has graciously let me have, knowing that basically I don't generally ruin things. Uh, and I went to Bernina and bought a rolled hemming foot. Okay. When I think about ironing the edge of yards and yards and yards and yards of this thin, thin, slick polyester fabric, I'm ready to just give up the idea. So I looked at this foot and it looked like it would be ideal for the job. So I bought it. It cost tax and all. I've got $54 in this hemming foot. Uh, happened to have it at the moment so I spent it and uh, the first one turned out to be faulty. I spent a number of frustrated hours and I looked at it and I figured it couldn't work the way it was made and uh, I thought it needed adjusting but you know what I paid $54 for it so yesterday I took it back to Bernina and uh, they couldn't make it work either. I pulled another one off the shelf we looked at it and sure enough um, the first one was faulty. So we got the second one now. That doesn't make it easy. There's going to be a learning curve with this. Um, some of you folks, I'm sure, have already used them. But uh, I'm learning, and it's going to work, but it's going to take some practice. So I am working on a scrap. I've got a half yard of this fabric here that I bought. And I am uh, trying. I've managed to more or less successfully here get uh, one seam sewn and I'm about to embark on the other. Needless to say, this is going to be one of those um, one of those piece by piece projects. And uh, so I'm going to try this. I may pause at some point and finish it up once I figure I'm going. Then we'll go on to the next step. And uh, you seamstresses out there, just laugh and laugh and then uh, put some helpful hints in the comments, okay? So we're going to give this a try now and see. You can see on this, I um, did at some point successfully uh, roll the hem. And uh, at some points, not so successfully. And then I would get it going again and then it would slip out. So, you know, we've got a little work to do. And uh, you can watch me struggle with it for a few minutes, okay? See, at the end there, I really got it messed up and I tried to fix it and that was a mistake. So let's see if I can get this thing started here. And we'll go from there. You need about four hands to do this, apparently. Come on, let's go. and two pair of eyes. And again, remember that problem I have where I want to, um, where I want to make everything just perfect, measure it perfectly, even though I know I can't. And so I end up measuring it a little shy. Well, that really, that really seems to apply here as well. Okay, let's see if I can get this edge to roll under. I always have Mary Margaret. I could always ask her to do all of this for me, but yeah, she might run away from home. All right. 
right, let's see. Okay, not rolling yet. Let me see if I can get it to. I did watch a lot of videos on how to do this. Okay, just about got it to roll under. I think I need to give it a little more fabric. You have to feed in about twice as much fabric as it wants to roll, which certainly makes sense. You have to have your needle off to the left, which I suppose certainly makes sense if you don't want the seam down the middle of your hem. Yay, it's working. Okay. So, see, I'm, I'm not a chicken. I'll try almost anything, even ugh, sewing. Of course, you know what? I'm going to owe Mary Margaret a good cleaning on her machine, which has been needing for years, just in payback for letting uh, me borrow her precious machine for this project. Because I will have put a few miles on it by the time I've done, oh, a couple of tarps and a couple of um, hammocks and some bushcraft chairs and that sort of thing. And... You can see my foot is not tuned to this machine either, is it? But it's working! Look, can you see? Uh, I guess you really can't see at all. can't see what I'm doing at all. It's working, see? So that's excellent. Let's do a little more. I apologize, sometimes I forget to look up at the camera and I have no ideas that you can, no idea that you can hear me but you can't see what I'm doing. And I'll get better at that, I promise. The nice thing that will happen, I'm sure, is I will run out of bobbin thread. I'm using uh, polyester fabric. Um, I don't know what weight it is. It's a dollar a yard at the uh, Walmart. And they have it in every color imaginable. And every time I see it, I go in and go, Oh, i got to buy a few more yards. Don't know what I'm going to do with all that fabric. Maybe everybody will get a tarp for Christmas. I don't know. Because the next thing I have to do is waterproof it. Give it uh, the same... I looked at Ripstop Nylon yesterday at Joann's Fabrics. It is $9 to $12 a yard. Now, I know it can be gotten cheaper online, but holy cow, I can't afford that at this point. If I were someone who camped on a weekly basis, then that might be something I would want to do. But at this point, I love this experiment. I love this fabric. I have very little... Um, in it. I don't know how this material is going to hold up uh, under sunlight. I know people say, well, you camp at night, but you know what? I'm going to be more than a day or two. I don't take my camp down for um, the day and put it back up again at night. The machine keeps kind of stalling out on me, and that could be because Bless its heart, it does need a good cleaning. It hasn't been maintenance since it was bought. So, and that's been some years ago now. <clears throat> At least ten. So, I owe Mary Margaret a good maintenance on her sewing machine, obviously. Okay, I am not going to make you watch me struggle through this anymore. I'm going to pause the camera and uh, go ahead and sew around this. And then we'll try sewing some of the grow grain ribbon on the corners and running some seams and basically I'm going to make a rather small but test worthy bushcraft chair out of this half a yard uh, of fabric. It may be a little more than half a yard. It's about that wide. Well, you can't see that. Anyway, a little more than half a yard but uh, we're going to see what we can do about making a bushcraft chair out of it and uh, I'll come back after that and uh, like I said, we'll try some ribbon on it but first I gotta finish this seam. It's gonna take me a little while. I'll see you shortly. Let me see if I can make this video pause. I'm still learning how to use this camera and it's old and worn out. One day I actually may um, get one that I can take outside that the battery works on. I took mine in to uh, be looked at and it's not a bad battery. It simply won't run from a bad batter from a battery. So, you know, I'm still trapped indoors with it. So if anybody has any good recommendations on an inexpensive video camera so I could 
get you folks outside? Leave it in the comments. I appreciate it. Hold on. I'll be right back.